Okay, so far you have found the volume of a region found by revolving a two-dimensional object about the x-axis and about the y-axis, and then about the, some vertical lines and horizontal lines. We are going to be find, finding the volumes of figures a little bit differently this time. We still are going to start with a two-dimensional shape, but what we are going to be doing is making cross-sections either perpendicular to the x-axis or the y-axis. All right, um, I'm going to start with showing you some examples so you have an idea of what it's going to look like 3D when we do this. Basically what's going to happen, we're going to have a shape that they will give us and it's going to form the two-dimensional shape. And then basically what I'm going to be doing is forming some shapes that come out of my paper and they will tell me what kind of shapes they want those to be. So I'm going to um, show you three examples that show you those cross sections. All right, example one. Notice the base is the square root of x and we are going to have cross sections. They're semicircular cross sections. They're perpendicular to the x-axis. Notice we're just doing a whole bunch of different semicircles, and each of those semicircles, they're getting bigger because they're hitting at a bigger spot of the curve. So you'll notice we're, when we're almost done, it gets a three-dimensional shape that looks like that. I'm not exactly sure what that shape would look like, but that's exactly what we do on that one. Example two, this time our base is an equilateral triangle. Notice it's just on the bottom and we're building the cross sections out of it. These again are perpendicular to the x-axis and we are building squares this time. So notice that the squares are getting bigger because um, it's hitting the equilateral triangle at a bigger spot on the triangle. And you can notice this time it's making a pyramid, which is kind of cool. And you'll always be told what your base is going to look like, and you'll always be told what kind of cross-sections you're going to have, because different cross-sections will produce definitely different looking figures. Okay, in example three, this time I have a circular base that has a radius of two, and we are going to have right isosceles triangular cross-sections coming out of my paper. So you'll notice my cross-sections are getting bigger. This time, again, I'm still perpendicular to the x-axis. And then notice they are going to start getting smaller, because I went from the um, bigger radius to a smaller radius on the circle. So you'll notice I get a figure that looks somewhat like that. And that would be the three-dimensional shape that is created. The number one thing to point out is that our cross-section, the base was a circle and the cross-sections were triangles. Okay, that is all that I wanted you to see for now. I just wanted you to get an introduction so you know what we are doing when we take volumes by cross-sections.